book I'm reading, Kate Bowler, who wrote these um, devotionals for Lent, has a chapter that's called 2 a.m., 2 p.m. And she says in this chapter that we like to ignore our 2 a.m. selves. That's the self that wakes up in the middle of the night and is scared. It's thinking about everything that is going on in their lives, all the troubles and worries. They lay out the pattern of everything that is happening and worry about their family and friends and everything runs through their brain about all the things they did or didn't do. But sometimes people live in their 2 a.m. self. She says, I learned that I was living in that 2 a.m. self because I got cancer. And she got cancer and had to get on an airplane every Wednesday morning in the middle of the night Wednesday to fly to another city where she could get her chemo treatment, spend all day having poison pumped in her blood, and hop on the plane to go back home. And she says those days of being in that airport, feeling miserable and horrible, I learned to see people who were at their 2 a.m. selves. I saw the mother who would wash the face of her children because they were living in the airport, trying to get them ready to go to school. She says, I didn't notice these people at first. I didn't notice that the people didn't constantly change. But as I was there every week, I started to notice those faces over and over again. The faces that nobody else saw, but started to become familiar because I saw them every week. Those people whose lives were hurting like her life. How do you live with a diagnosis of cancer, not knowing what the total outcome will be, how far, how long you will stay alive with that diagnosis? What will happen to your husband and your children? In those moments, The world changes for you. You learn that the world isn't as controlled as you think it is. That all the scheduling and planning that you did don't matter at all anymore. That your 2 a.m. self, the one that wakes up worried, is now your daily reality. Because your 2 p.m. self that's the one that's got it all together. You're in your day. You've done all the right things. You've got your schedule down. You are working, right? You're at your best self then. But sometimes life gets out of control. And the worried self is the one that takes over and becomes your reality. How do we live in a world that is out of control? And this is the question for all of us right now. Because it seems like every time we think we're on a path where things are getting better, something new happens and transforms that direction we think we're going. Every time we think we're getting out of the mess that is COVID, we find a new variant has popped up and a new wave is beginning to climb. Every time we think life may be settling down, violence erupts. Because it wasn't enough that we were worried about the people in Ukraine. Then bombs dropped in Iraq yesterday. Life has been out of control for us for a very long time. And how do we 
go from the self that is hurt and worried and scared into a self that can move forward. That's what Jesus' scripture is about today. Because what happens at the beginning of the story is the religious leaders come up to Jesus and say to him, Herod doesn't like you. He's out to get you. So you don't want to go to Jerusalem. But because we know the whole story, and we know that the religious leaders are often doing things to Jesus in this story, we know that that isn't the complete story, what they're saying to him about Herod. We know that they have motivation to keep him out of Jerusalem. They don't want him to challenge their religious order and their system of power. And so maybe if they can make him scared of Herod, maybe then he won't mess with them. And Jesus says to him, the religious leaders, I know he's a fox. I know he is dangerous. But I'm on the way. Haven't you seen what I've been doing? Haven't you seen the evil that I have been getting rid of? Haven't you seen the cures that I've given to people? Haven't you seen the way I have loved indiscriminately? The way I have shown what it means to be present with God. And then he gets sad, right? Or maybe he gets angry. How do you want to read those words? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets. Do you want to see him crying that they can't they can't hear the pain that is out in the rest of the country. That seat of power cannot feel and experience what everyone is going through. And maybe he's crying for their ears being unable to hear and their eyes being unable to see. Maybe he's angry. Maybe he's angry. Not just sad but mad that they are not caring about the people that God has put here. Maybe he's angry that they don't care that there are so many hurting in the world and they've just walked on by. And then he says to us, here's what God is like. God is like a mother hen who gathers the chicks together. Although as I was thinking about this, I don't know how many of you who have watched ducks and hens try to move their chicks. <laughs> like they walk in a line, right? Like especially if they're crossing the road to get to the pond. But there's always two or three who do not follow mom, right? They sort of wander in their own direction, making their way to the pond, but not in a straight line with their mother. And sometimes hurting those hens and chicks to get under their wings can be very difficult, can be challenging, can be traumatic. But Jesus said, like that mother hen. And even if you aren't following the straight path, even if you wander a little bit, even if you make it to Jerusalem and aren't in the place I need you, I am still putting my wings out to surround you. I am still wanting to gather you in. I am still wanting to comfort you. 
I am still wanting to keep you safe and whole. In this out of control world, when we're living in this space, in this liminal moment, where we don't know what comes next, we don't know what it looks like for what comes next, what we do know is that God wants to gather us in. Not to change you, whether you're the wandering chick or the straight path chick. But God wants to surround you with that love. To show you that if you follow the way, if you, as the many saying, all I ask of you is to love. If you learn to love, that out of control feeling changes. 